Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video we're going to talk about C-Shop Constructor Inheritance and here I want to show you a best practice and something that you may not be aware of. So as you can see we have a class person right here. We have two properties string name and int h. And we for sure also have a constructor, so public person, it takes two parameters and it initializes them. So if you have no clue about constructors, please go ahead and check out our video on constructors in general. It should be highlighted right now. But just to explain a constructor in one sentence, it's a method that gets called when you initialize or when you create an object. Well, so that method will get called and it will initialize the object. That's the correct termination. Great. So if we create another class, let's say we want to create an employee class. And this one is inherited from the person class right here. This is something that you usually have done already. Doesn't matter if you're developing any console applications, games or web applications, inheritance. I'm pretty sure that you will have ever created a class and inherited it from another class. Then you have some custom properties here. So let's create a property int, let's call it just employee ID. And now we don't have to create a new property called name and age because it gets inherited, right? So that's for sure the main benefit. So now let's create a constructor. So write down ctor, hit tap tap. Now we have an empty constructor for employee. Let's write down string name, integer age, because that's how we would create that object, right? So int age and int employee ID. Great. So now we could create that employee by assigning all the initialized fields and all of that. You cannot create an object like this right now because you are ignoring the constructor right here. So we don't want to duplicate code. So we don't want to write down for the employee. I want to set the name property to the name parameter value right here. That's not what we want to do. Why? Well, because we have that line of code already here. This is where we are initializing the person's name. If we do that here again, that's a bad practice. We're duplicating our code. So it's a common practice to instead for sure use the base constructor right here to initialize its own properties. So in that scenario, or by following that practice inside of our employee constructor, we would only for sure initialize our own property from that employee class right here. Okay, so we're using that. So what do we do with name and age and how do we get rid of the error? Well by calling the base, which is the parent class, so person in that scenario. And here we can simply provide parentheses. So he's calling the base constructor. You can see that we provide name and age at the closing parentheses. And there we go. Now our employee constructor only initializes his own property right here. And we're calling the base constructor to initialize the base properties from our person class. So name and age. Great. So this is constructor inheritance. Now, if you're looking for a way to massively boost your C Sharp skills, check out our C Sharp Progress Academy. It's a self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and C Sharp software design patterns in depth. We offer a 14-day money-back guarantee, and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C Sharp developer. So you can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. And I'm pretty sure that you have often seen this space, and this is what it means. Now let me show you another example right here. Here I have three classes in total. The base class is DB connection, right? So we have a connection string, we have a time span timeout, we have a constructor here, which well creates the DB connection. Then we have an open method and a close method, and those are virtual, so they can get overwritten. So well, virtual and override is for sure also part of inheritance and object oriented programming. Now we have a class which is called SQL connection. It's inherited from DB connection. And if you take a look at the constructor that we have right here, you can see that we for sure are passing the connection string to the base constructor again. But then inside the SQL connection constructor itself, we can handle some specific SQL connection, which is only specific to SQL. And if we scroll down and we get to the Oracle connection or whatever database provider you can think of, again, you would have that base connection string, right? So you're setting it up and providing it to the base class. And now you can handle your Oracle connection stuff for sure, including the open and closing and all of that. Awesome. And that's it on constructor inheritance. And for sure, subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss any upcoming C Sharp and .NET related videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back in the next one.